Okay. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. I, we have a small group, but hopefully we will have um, some vibrant discussions. Um, as always, this meeting is under the Universal Code of Conduct of the Wikimedia Foundation. So please take a look on Meta if you are not familiar and familiarize yourself with it if you are not um, already familiar with it. Um, and I'm honored today to introduce our two, um, I don't know if panelists is the right word, um, discussion leaders, um, Zico and Ricky here. Um, and I will turn it over to Zico to kick us off. Okay. So thank you, Luyana. I hope the button works, yes. And it is this one. So can you see, uh, no, no, this, this is the whole screen or no, this is just the, the file, yes? Yeah, we see your... We see <laughs> the yellow text. The yellow text, but yeah, we also see the menu the around it now. as well. Okay, welcome to a little starter just to get us into the topic of children and the internet. And the first one is uh, general. Imagine that you are a moderator on a platform for children. It's not a wiki, it's just an open chat website and posts only become public after you, the moderator, activate them. So which of the following comments would you allow? And I'm very curious what what your answers are. Maybe you want to give them in the chat, or we are not so many, but uh, just uh, I'm reading it. A, I think Taylor Swift's music is just awful. B, hey, I have updated my profile page here. Come and have a look, everyone. See, I'm fed up with the chaos here. The moderators don't intervene. I'm getting out of here. D, hello, I have some pets. Four cats, two dogs, six guinea pigs, three golden hamsters, two budgies, one parrot. How do we do it in, in the, uh, you want to write it in the chat maybe? The letters, which answers would you allow? Which comments would you allow? Okay, you allow all of them, right? Yes, and uh, before I started, I would... Uh, golden hamster is a kind of hamster. That's what the uh, Beetle.com uh, uh, gave as an answer. <laughs> yes? Yes, nice. So I would have done the same before I started with the Klexicon, and then I uh, learned a little bit about, well, the Internet, uh, things I didn't know before. So we all agree on this, uh, Taylor Swift. You can have an opinion on that etc. that that's okay. Oh, we have a question from Obi. We have here uh, just a quiz a starter. Which of these comments you would pass through if you are the moderator on a chat website, a chat room for children? Well, and the thing I didn't know that number D is very problematic. So usually a moderator would hold this message and uh, have contact with the person because this can be a code you know, like a telephone number or ICQ code when it existed. So four, two, six, three, two, one. And you can do it in a different way with letters. Yeah, the, the first names of your friends. So this can be a code that someone wants to lead children to a different channel of communication, a one by one uh, channel. <laughs> And I guess this can be part of cyber grooming and the child the child that has so many pets actually is a 40-year-old man. So um, when I learned about this, I became more, yes, more aware of these problems. When you have to deal, deal with children on the internet, that uh, you cannot just open a platform and think that everything is all right. And the next one, so I have uh, only two questions for you. Um, imagine that you have an encyclopedia for children, a wiki encyclopedia for children, and there's the article about mermaids, and you are looking for images for this article. And my question is, which of the images would you choose for the article? It can be several. So, you know, you can choose A, B, A plus B, or zero. Do you want to write it in the chat? Are both images okay? A, B, only A or only B?
Okay, yes. Does any one of you want to say why you wouldn't take number B? Oh, yes, uh, Caroline has, has one answer, the alcohol, which is an additional problem, yes. Does anyone want to say anything about one of the images? If you want mm. to unmute. I don't know, it's, it's really difficult because you have um, different perspectives and religious people who maybe think different about uh, the both of both of them it is really difficult for me at, at, at my country right yes, and you would have asked yourself in which country are your readers and uh, in the case of german it is relatively simple it's in central europe the cultures are similar but yes if it is about spanish or arabic or english it, yes that's a very good uh, very good uh, note thank you so i see uh, liana says it's not really about a mermaid and uh, Yes, what I thought about this, so I have uh, these, this kind of questions I'm dealing with all the time for our Wiki Encyclopedia for Children. And uh, this is about text, but also about images. So um, on the one hand, I want to assume good faith. I don't want to say that anything bad or terrible is happening there. I assume that, well, everyone involved is happy with what they are doing there. Yes, a little bit swimming and a little bit tipping for that. So let's assume that everything is okay. But on the other hand, um, yes, I cannot be naive. And uh, this is about women showing off the bodies, hoping to get money for men or presumably mostly men. And that is the same pr uh, principle as in a strip club. So again, I don't want to make any nasty insinuations, but if I were to show the picture in a children's encyclopedia, well, I would have to give there all this background, what I just told you, and then, yes, it would very much distract from the topic of the article, which is mermaid, as uh, Liana absolutely correctly said. So uh, there are also other topics, uh, contentious uh, topics, when I think, well, maybe I should show this image to give the whole idea about something, but then I would have to give additional information for the children and it would become too much. And that might be sometimes different when it is an encyclopedia for grown-ups. You know, when, when it's about children, you are more delicate. You must be more careful. All right, Liana, these are my... Uh, Two questions for starters. Oh no, there's no AI involved. The images are, you always see the little names there. Those are the photographers and you can find it on comments. Yes? Okay, I'm done. Uh, Ricky, you want to, to go on? Sure. Um, give me one second while I share my screen. All right, um, let's see. All right, can you all see my screen? Excellent. All right, um, for those of you that are just joining us, um, again, my name is Ricky Gaines and I'm the, the Human Rights Policy and Advocacy Lead at the Wikimedia Foundation. And I led our work on our Child Rights Impact Assessment, which I will uh, be discussing today. Um, very quickly, just to kind of frame this conversation, I, I would like to kind of propose two questions for you to keep in mind as, as we are, um, as I'm sharing this presentation with you. The first is, what is the role of children in relation to the Wikimedia movement, and how can the movement keep children safe? Here we go. Um, so, as I mentioned, the, the Wikimedia Foundation conducted a child rights impact assessment last year. Uh, which we uh, published um, earlier this year in January. And once I'm finished and kind of have my windows back <laughs> in a normal way, I'll, I'll share with you the link to that child rights impact assessment report so you can review it. Um, why did we commission this report? Well, in 2021, in December of 2021, the foundation and the board adopted our human rights policy, um, which committed us to protect and uphold the, the human rights of all those that interact with Wikimedia projects. Um, in 2020, 
um, prior to that uh, human rights policy being adopted, uh, we, the foundation carried out a human rights impact assessment that looked across all of the foundation's operations and all of the movement's activities at a global scale. And one of the specific recommendations of that report was to carry out a child rights impact assessment to better understand the specific risks that children face on Wikimedia projects. Um, this also came at an important time as we think about public policy around the world, so laws and regulations, because there's growing interest among governments um, to legislate and regulate in order to uh, keep children safe online. So what did this report evaluate? Um, it, it evaluated opportunities for children, and for the purposes of this report, we are um, defining children as um, users or you know people under the age of 18. We understand that children and youth can have different meanings and different cultural contexts, but for the purposes of this report, we're focusing on those under 18, so sort of the most vulnerable um, kind of segment of that population. Um, so it looked at opportunities, so the, the benefits that children can have by, by having access to Wikimedia projects, as well as the risks that they can face for, for having access to and participating in these projects. And it resulted in a, a report that assessed how the movement and the foundation manages child-related risks and provides a series of actionable recommendations. Um, in terms of kind of how this report um, conducted its analysis, um, it, it grouped or categorized children into three different groups. So the first group, which is sort of the, the one of the, I think kind of the primary focuses of, of the report was child editors. So those would be volunteers who are editing, adding and editing and contributing content to Wikimedia projects. Um, the next group would be in-person participants. So these would be children that are participating in you know, in-person offline events that are organized through the foundation or affiliates. And then the third, and of course the biggest uh, group is the general public. So these would be children that are sort of passively reading content on Wikipedia or browsing other content on other Wikimedia pages uh, for educational purposes or just you know, the purposes of, of learning about things um, on their own. The report identified a number of uh, benefits and opportunities to children. So it's it's important for this report to, to in order to help us kind of holistically understand um, what our relation or what the movement's relationship to children is, kind of the benefits that they can receive uh, by being involved. Um, I've organized this slide to kind of show you like the nucleus, you know, what are the most central uh, benefits and opportunities that children receive immediately. Um, and then kind of moving out from there, the secondary and third order uh, benefits that they also receive as well. So, so kind of most centrally, one of the most central benefits is the, the ability to exercise their freedom of expression, uh, which um, is defined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as the ability to seek, receive, and impart ideas um, regardless of borders and without barriers. Uh, so this, of course, directly relates to the right to access information. And also, you know, the ability to participate in our movement um, impacts their ability to exercise their freedom of association as well. Um, kind of moving outwards to, to the secondary uh, benefits that children receive are, you know, access to Wikimedia projects um, improves their ability to exercise their rights to education and development, as well as their rights to participate in civic, cultural, social, and political lives in their own communities offline. Um, importantly, kind of the another benefit, and this is not an exhaustive list of all benefits, but these are sort of what I think are the most central and important ones. The, the kind of high, high level overarching benefit is the lifelong benefit that children receive um, that relates to their ec to, to economic opportunities later in life and self-esteem. So when a child is able to participate actively in, in Wikimedia projects as an editor or a contributor um, or a volunteer in other capacities, um, they learn skills about uh, research, about writing, um, about citing their sources, all of things which directly uh, impact their um, you know, scholastic performance outside of Wikimedia projects. Um, to an extent, they can learn how to uh, code 
um, and, and do other things online. It increases their sort of media literacy and their computer and internet literacy as well. Uh, so all of those tangible benefits follow them through life and can improve uh, their access to um, you know, educational and um, occupational benefits later on. Um, also being able to participate in a movement that has um, sort of a higher purpose than themselves. You know, we're, we're all working together to advance the, the sum of all human knowledge. Um, the opportunity to, to take on leadership roles within their communities helps to build their self-esteem and helps to grow leadership abilities, which again, follow them through life and help them to, to become leaders in their own communities, um, in their own occupations, at university, et cetera. So, so really, you know, th these benefits start kind of um, immediately at their computer where they're, uh, you know, they're exercising their freedom of expression, but they really follow them through life in really impactful ways. Um, but access to Wikimedia projects is not without risk for children. And, and no one on this call right now should be surprised by that because there are risks inherent to, to doing anything on the internet, but it's important that we identify these risks so we can also begin taking steps to, to reduce these risks as much as we can. Um, I also wanna highlight that these risks are not necessarily unique to children but children experience them in unique ways and they um, you know, impact children perhaps uh, disproportionately or in different ways than they might um, affect adults. So of course, children can be exposed to harassment and bullying on Wikimedia projects. Um, adults can also be exposed to harassment and bullying, but you can imagine the profound impact that that can have on a child um, who is early on in their development and still trying to figure out kind of who they are, you know, what their role in the world is and kind of, you know, um, how they deal with, with, with these sorts of encounters. Um, children can also uh, be exposed to harmful content and misrepresentation of facts. So this could be anything, you know, um, ranging from, let's say, uh, information on uh, suicide methods, which is on English Wikipedia. Um, it can also um, include exposure to disinformation. Um, children, because, you know, of where they are in their, in their development, they probably have a harder time um, uh, sort of identifying, you know, what, what is fact and what is opinion. Also, you know, identifying what is potentially misinformation or disinformation and being able to differentiate between that and make their own judgment about um, content that they're um, encountering. Um, children can also experience infringements on their right to privacy. Um, children have sort of a, a uh, perhaps a lower understanding of what sort of information ought to be published about themselves online in order to protect their privacy. Um, they may not understand that by sharing certain details, um, it would be easy for a stranger out there to, to identify who they are. Um, they might not understand that their username should be something totally unrelated to their personality or, you know, their person, rather than, you know, their name, or first name or last name or some sort of other identifying characteristic. So these things can have negative impacts on their right to privacy when sort of uh, malicious actors or the bad guys out there are looking to, to exploit that. Um, Children can also experience harmful contact. Um, so, so Zico, you gave a really fascinating example earlier about how, um, you know, what is seemingly innocent, innocent information could actually be an attempt to engage in harmful contact with a minor in order to uh, kind of begin the grooming process in, in an area where, uh, you know, that is non-public. Um, there's also, you know, child exploitation issues. Um, so CSAM, which is um, child sexual abuse material, um, that is also, you know, that's very harmful for children to encounter, but this report also um, considers that um, it is, you know, it's very problematic and incredibly damaging for, for the children that may be depicted um, in those sorts of images. Um, on Wikimedia projects, children can also um, experience discrimination and non-equity due to, you know, their personal characteristics, whether it's uh, gender, race, religion, or perhaps their, their perceived status as a child or a minor on, our, uh, on these projects. Um, they are challenged by inaccessibility and inequity. Um, so perhaps, you know, um, they have a hard time kind of 
accessing the or understanding the terms of use and privacy policies on our projects because they're written in very high level legal jargon that sometimes adults like me have a difficult time understanding and as children they certainly do as well um, and because you know children sometimes engage in our projects as you know anonymously um, without sort of getting or you know without the ability to really engage you know, live virtually because of their children and they may not feel comfortable doing so. They have, they deal with the, the impacts of having a lack of voice in the movement. So, you know, they're not really able to speak up in public fora openly to talk about their experiences as, as minors on Wikimedia projects in order to contribute to conversations, solutions, and, um, and the like within our community. And then finally, um, inadequate access to remedy. This is just a fancy way of saying that sometimes they have a hard time accessing um, the the processes and channels to report problems and to to have issues resolved on their behalf because these these processes can be complex and the processes and the documents outlining them are also complex and difficult for children to understand. So as I stated at the beginning, this report was both analyzing these challenges and opportunities, but also provided a number of recommendations. Um, here I've got seven that I think it's important to highlight, um, some of which we've uh, begun taking action on, others not. Um, the report contains a number of recommendations um, beyond these seven, uh, but going through that would take up a lot, of, uh, a lot of time and I just wanna highlight kind of some high level things. So the first, developing a ch child safeguarding policy, regularly identifying risks to children and making a single team within the foundation responsible for child safety and child rights. Uh, the second recommendation, developing a child-friendly complaints and reporting mechanism along with uh, sufficient resources to, um, to make that process work. Number three, evaluating the Wikimedia 2030 movement strategy through a child rights lens. Number four, partnering with child experts and other organizations um, working on supporting child rights online. Five, empower children to protect themselves by providing child-friendly resources and tools. So that would be resources and tools that are actually easy for children to understand kind of at their reading level, but in their own language. Um, number six, integrating ch children's voices into the foundation's approach to product development and design. And finally, engaging with governments on regulations and policies that uh, affect uh, children's uh, children on online. Um, so this this all begs the question: you know, what has the foundation um, done um, in order to address these recommendations since we received the report? Uh, we have published a new policy um, earlier this year, which is called the Combating Online Child Exploitation Policy, um, which I can after I finish up here, I'll put the link to that um, in the chat so you can check that out. Um, that same policy provides some easy to understand recommendations for children to actually protect themselves and to report problems. Um, the foundation has continued to support the development of the incident reporting system. We've begun including child rights considerations in reviews of uh, recent grant applications. Uh, we've identified and documented activities um, and initiatives occurring within the with media communities and the broader movement that are working to empower and protect children on our projects. Uh, we've improved the structure and governance of um, the Foundation Human Rights Steering Committee to really be more responsive to, to handling uh, some of these recommendations and these broader issues that we are being called upon to, to address. And finally, we've designated a current staff member to lead child safeguarding efforts within the Foundation's trust and safety team. So where do we go from here? This is a long-term conversation that needs to be had kind of among the volunteer community and, and with the foundation. We need to achieve you know, broad understanding among volunteers and encourage community leadership in addressing many of these issues and taking up some of these recommendations. And, and I'm here today because I think that the, the EduWiki user group um, is in a really great spot to, to kind of lead in some of these areas and, 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 and help this conversation advance, just because this is the user group that I think is probably the most likely to, to really come into contact with, uh, with uh, users under the age of 18. And so um, I invite you all to welcome your questions, but I also invite you to participate in an upcoming session we'll have on the same topic um, at Wikimania in August. So, um, I think I might have run long, so I'm just gonna 
I'll turn it back over to you, Zico. Okay, thank you very much, Ricky. Very interesting. And I would have loved to hear this 10 years earlier or 15 years earlier, but you're the least person to complain about that. So thank you very much. I see uh, we are on the right track here. And actually, you are already took away some points that I have prepared for this evening. So lovely. Thank you. Liana, do, do you want to uh, say something in between? Yeah, I did. Joao had a question in the chat here of, um, can you provide a definition of children? Is it a sy synonym for being a minor, a concept that changes given context and given context leads to distinct responsibilities? Yes. Um, so that's, I, I think that was kind of one of the first challenges we, we encountered with this work is like, what, how are we defining a child? Um, for the purposes of this report, we, we focus on um, those under the age of 18. Uh, we recognize that in different um, legal contexts, different cultural contexts, the word child or minor or youth or kid all have different meanings um, and different kind of age ranges associated with them. Um, we, we decided to stick to under the age of 18 just because um, you know, that, that fits with a lot of the, the legal obligations that the foundation has in the U.S., you know, where we are based and we're exposed to a lot of laws. Um, but also, I, my, my personal feeling on this is that those under the age of 18 that are still sort of, um, you know, uh, developing and learning how to interact and in, um, safely online, that sort of is the um, kind of the most vulnerable group that is out there. And so we need to kind of um, take care to 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 attend to their needs uh, to the extent possible. Um, John, I John, see you, I, yeah. you have, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ricky, for your presentation. I think it's amazing the uh, this kind of issue in in the educational uh, community. And I, I I don't know if I have a question, but a comment about the the risky point. Um, the lack of uh, the lack of voice in the movement, you know, I I think uh, as as far as I try to experience this kind of uh, participation and trying to participate with children, uh, it is difficult uh, because the risk is double. I mean, there is a risk into the risk when you try to develop different projects uh, like uh, produce a Wikipedia article with children. And at the end of the day, the um, the people behind the Wikipedia they, they don't they don't mind that you are working with children. They they try to uh, do and make the better effort, but at the end they erase all the work behind the groups. So maybe it it, it depends upon the situation and the law be, behind Wikipedia. Uh, but the educa the educational um, um, environment and uh, need a little bit uh, patience, need tolerance, need um, more um, um, engagement with with the projects. You know, if not, uh, the risk is double. You try to produce something, but at the end, the risk uh, becomes uh, all the results will be raised by the librarians or, or the people uh, with, uh, I don't know, 20 years into the Wikipedia. So it is really difficult uh, uh, to to close this kind of gap, you know? I, I don't know what yeah. you talk, what, what you think about that. Uh, Any one of you, thank you. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'd love to hear other other people's opinion on this, but, but John, I, I, I agree totally. Um, it is challenging. I mean, how do we engage children in the movement? Um, I think that, you know, this is the first time that we're really kind of acknowledging that children are part of the movement um, and that children are stakeholders um, in our movement and, and access our projects. Uh, so how do we engage with them and how do we um, give them a voice in this movement? That's a hard question. Um, engaging children raises other questions. First of all, we don't know which you know users are children because we don't collect data on our users and, and children can participate anonymously. I mean, uh, you know, educators and, 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 and people like yourself, you work with children, you know, directly that, you know, we know of, but others that are just participating and editing quietly online, um, you know, from the comfort of their own home, we don't know if they are, you know, we don't know if they're uh, 15 years old or 50 years old. 
Um, so, you know, there are challenges like that. Um, there are also just challenges with if we're going to, um, if we're going to bring children into these spaces, how do we keep them safe? You know, we, we have to make sure that if we, if we were to choose to bring them into these spaces, we have to keep them safe. So what sort of child safeguarding uh, measures do we have in place uh, that govern in-person events? Who is there, um, you know, that would be sort of what we call a mandatory reporter, somebody that would have to report to law enforcement if they became a, a aware of a, of a risk or a threat to a child? Um, are there are, are the adults there trained um, on how to to work with children and keep them safe? Um, are there parents there? Um, I think that you know one of the best ways to do this is if children are going to participate, make sure their parents are with them. Their parents you know, know what is in their best interest. But if you're going to pay for their travel, for example, that's just a hypothetical example, then you, you should also pay for the travel with the parent. These are just many questions that that make this a really complex topic. And I think it's really important that we're, we're having this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. I think that actually is a great segue into Zico's uh, next set of slides here. Zico, are you ready? Should I go ahead and share? Yes, please. Okay. All right. I think you should be able to see it, Zico. Yes. Can we see it? Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Liana. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, let me just start with uh, with my slides. So um, what I'm going to talk about is should Wikipedia become child appropriate or not? And how does an encyclopedia for children look like? And why do we find it sometimes so difficult to think about children and wikis? So next slide, please. I would like to share here the experience I have gained over the last 10 years. I have co-founded a wiki encyclopedia for children, the Klexikon. It's in German and it is written by adult volunteers and the target group. They are children from 8 to 14 years old. Next one, please. I also want to talk systematically about the components of a wiki and what they mean for children. So I will not only use my lexicon experience, but also insights from my book about wikis. I hope that this reasoning and mapping later will give us a good overview for the discussion. What is our attitude on education? So what can go wrong when we try to support children? Let's have a look at the One Laptop Per Child project, when the idea was to provide poor children in poor countries with a cheap laptop to improve the children's education. However, the initiators had surprisingly little interest in children and the situation in poor countries because they came from a hacker culture and they assumed that children would learn independently with the computers, that the children would handle the computers with care and that they would repair the computers by themselves if necessary. So the letter failed simply because uh, many parents of the children simply didn't have the money to buy spare parts. And apart that from the fact that many schools did not even have constant electricity. But why did donors give so much money to these initiatives? Because they were attracted by the values and sentiments behind the project. The donors considered themselves to be educated and they liked working with computers. So it appealed to them that poor children do the same and escape poverty through education. And of course, they thought the cheap laptop was cute with the antenna that we were called bunny ears. Unfortunately, the cute antenna contributed to many children not taking the laptop so seriously because it looked more like a cheap toy. So what I intend to say here, we adults love to see children doing what we like to do. We like to see ourselves and the children and perhaps this sometimes makes it difficult for us to realize what expectations we actually have of children and whether these expectations are realistic. But let's keep talking about cuteness. A few years ago, I was teaching a seminar at a university in Germany. The students were future teachers of German. And uh, yes, I showed them a text 
It was written by an eight-year-old girl. It had written it for the Clexicon, for our encyclopedia. And the text had a few spelling mistakes, but more important to me were shortcomings in the structure and factuality. One student said, but what's the problem? I think it's cute. And I replied, uh, yes, please do. But imagine this. A child on a Sunday afternoon wants to look up something on the internet for school. In that situation, a child isn't looking for something cute, but for good and useful content. So in the 10 years that I have been working on the Clexicon, I've seen time and again that some adults have rather special ideas when it comes to a children's encyclopedia. But to be honest, before I started with the Clexicon, I had no other ideas either. So here are four examples. One, a university student once told me that writing for a children's encyclopedia couldn't be that difficult because it is only for children. Two, a new volunteer wrote an article for the Clexicon. I tried to explain to the gentleman that the text was far too complicated. He said that his text was excellent. If some children find it too difficult, they should learn to read better. Three, someone else said the articles in a children's encyclopedia should ideally be written by children. Children are the target group and children themselves know best what interests children. Uh, besides, you can save a lot of work this way, then you don't have to write the articles by yourself. But that make me, makes me wonder, I am a German man. Does that mean that I am automatically a wonderful author for German men? And are children books not also written by adults like Astrid Lindgren or Berta Bratt? Four, a teacher had her pupils write articles for the Klexikon this year because she had a lesson to spare. But the quality of the text was very low. I also found plagiarism in them. For example, whole sentences were copied from Wikipedia. The teacher didn't understand why I had a problem with this. After all, the child in question had delivered a very good test by the child's own standards. Right, what did Michael and I learn for the Klexicon? It is completely pointless to let children write something just like that. We were able to save some texts with a lot of reworking. And even then, we were unsure whether there wasn't plagiarism in the text or whether the facts were even correct. The text actually had to be more or less rewritten. It would have taken us less effort if we had written the articles ourselves from the start. Does this mean that children are not involved in the lexicon at all? No. We visit schools and we talk to the children about the content of the lexicon. They tell us what content they would like to see and whether they have found any mistakes or difficult words in an article. We also got to know a teacher who had the children write articles in class. Martin talked intensively with the pupils about the aims of an encyclopedia, about text structure, about the phases of text production, and why is it useful to receive feedback at all. Yeah, you know, collaboration is always a, a problem. So the teacher planned several weeks for the class project, and at least some useful texts were produced, but only, really only because of this thorough preparation. Yeah, that is the dilemma. At school, what does writing look like? The, ob the objective at school is that children learn something. Of course, they can make mistakes on their learning journey, and that's not a bad thing. After all, they work in the classroom. Nobody sees their texts except the teacher, and the teacher assesses the texts according to whether the individual, ch individual child has made progress. Great. But things suddenly look very different when texts are published. Published texts must comply with certain rules. Texts that are published must comply, uh, for example, uh, you are not allowed to slander anyone, not even celebrities. Otherwise, you can get into real trouble. So when we founded the Clexicon, we asked ourselves, what is really important to us? That children have another free space to practice writing or that we offer good content? The aim of the Clexicon is therefore to provide good content for children. And what does good content look like? What does child-friendly mean? 
Let's put it this way. First of all, content should not harm children. Right. For example, a speech of the German president should be harmless to children. Yes, you can call that child friendly. But the content is really aimed at but if the content is really aimed at children, then that is not enough. The German president's speech is harmless but boring for children. So content that is explicitly aimed at children must be also relevant and understandable. And about understandability, here an example. Most of the water on Earth is salt water. Only 3.5% of the water is fresh water that we can drink. All right, many grown-ups can easily understand the sentence. However, is this suitable for children? We had the lexicon examined school curricula to determine when German children typically learn about decimals and percentages. The age varies depending on the state and school type. Some children learn about them at 10 years old, others might be 12 year old, uh, years old or even older. And then it takes time for children to fully grasp these concepts and use them confidently. For this reason, we avoid using decimals and percentages at all. And by the way, ChatGTP suggested this wording to me. Most of the water on Earth is salty and we can't drink it. Only a tiny part, like a small piece of a big puzzle, is fresh water that we can drink. And I think that explanation is actually quite good. Unfortunately, there is no one big textbook on how to create a children's encyclopedia. So when Michael and I started with the Klexicon, we had to learn a lot from different disciplines and from experience. I also looked at other wikis for children as they are available in several languages. Um, yeah, there I often saw that the texts were not always written well, or I thought an article was quite good. No, actually quite good as a text, but it wasn't particularly written or comprehensible for children. And I also discovered the following. So this is from another wiki, uh, Wiki Kids uh, from the Netherlands. And uh, yes, uh, well, you can read it for yourself. I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right, and now you think, Zico, why were you so stupid and leave the translated with uh, deeple.com? But the reason for I could have translated it myself, actually, but I intentionally used a mach machine translation so that you don't think I'm translating with a bias. So this is just the neutral machine. So and I once had a conversation with a gentleman who sits on the board of that site, uh, WikiKids, and he said that this article was perfectly okay. After all, children should learn about the, the realities of life at an early age. So this is his opinion, not mine, and we would never allow such things in the lexicon. Dear friends of free knowledge, let's move on to mapping, which I promised to you. So, and for this task, I like to use my wiki model from my book, because I want to know what a wiki consists of, and what questions you can ask when it comes, for example, to children. And the wiki model is intended to provide an overview. And I have a first chapter from my book in English translated on my user page on English Wikipedia. If you want, I can give you a link later. Um, yes. Um, yeah, let's start here. Why not? A wiki has an owner, you know. So this is the Wikimedia Foundation in this case. And there are many points we could discuss here. And Wiki already uh, talked about it, but in general, yes, a Wiki owner can, of course, ask itself which goals it is pursuing with the Wiki, and we will talk more about later. This Wiki owner runs a website, the Wiki, and here you can ask yourself how the Wiki is designed. Can children understand how it works? Does the layout and branding appeal to them? Or also, should there be a technical age check? And how would it uh, real, be realized? 
and the content of the wiki, so child-friendly content, that is a big topic in itself, so I won't go into detail about that uh, here. But then, yes, the reception of the wiki, children as readers. How do children learn about the, we the website? In what situation do they use the website, etc.? And yes, what is a wiki famous for? In a wiki, the readers can become contributors. And this means that someone changes the roles. And yes, one could ask whether this possible role change looks different for children than for adults, etc., etc. So now being a contributor, or this is the letter M for someone who modifies a wiki, Wikipedia, someone who edits. So as we have seen, Yes, when you write something for the public, that is a great responsibility. And here we can ask ourselves, for example, if a minor is editing, wouldn't it need a declaration of consent from a parent or guardian? Then collaboration with other people in the wiki, you know, in the, in the wiki community. So that's a platform on which complete strangers meet each other. A wiki community appreciates certain values, such as personal responsibility, individuality, self-learning, standing, standing up for yourself. That's a true Wikipedia, right? But can children thrive in such a community? Can they protect their interests sufficiently? Et cetera, et cetera. And something we often forget about, what about the sources? You know, so um, yeah, the sources. So we have the world we are writing about, the world with its objects. Experts write expert literature, the so-called sources about the world. And this expert literature has to become the basis for Wikipedia articles, eh? footnotes, and so on. But what about children? If children write an article, what sources could they use? Can children read the expert literature? What about the world that is described? And you can also ask a lot of questions here, for example, in Wikipedia, we sometimes see photos in which children can be seen. Did the parents always give permission for that? And finally, in the center of the chart, there are the law and the rules. And this is so important that I'm going to switch to another chart. So I made an overview of where the rules that, is, that are relevant in a wiki come from. So I, I hope that the letters, uh, that the font is not too small. But we see here at the top, so, you know, macro level, um, uh, Luhmann would say, subsystems of society, isn't it? So at the top, we see government and the law of the state, very important. And only part of this is relevant for a wiki. So not so much the road traffic law, but copyright. Go, I don't think right? we're, we're not seeing a graphic right now. Oh, I can see one. Do we see slide 23? No, you cannot see? I cannot, but I don't know if that's just me. Oh. Were you seeing it's slides before? Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Yes, With but, macro yes, level, but, yeah. Thank you for saying. I'm always afraid of just talking to the camera and uh, everything else is what is what we're. All right, so... Um, Government is important, the law of the state, and not everything is relevant, but some is. And when we talk about children, well, there are the regulations for protection against harmful content for young people and maybe a lot of yeah, law and ordinances we are not aware of at the moment, you know. And then there are rules from organizations on the meso and exo level partners of the movement or organizations that may not belong to the government. So if you don't follow their rules, you don't, you will not go to jail. But they can still be important. Think of child protection organizations that make recommendations for child-friendly content. And then, as we have seen, there's the wiki owner, the Wikimedia Foundation, which can set rules, for example, but not only via the terms of use. And finally, there's the community of contributors. So a community can also set rules for itself within the law of the state and the rules of the owner, of course. So for a specific wiki and a specific, a specific purpose, 
you would therefore have to carry out a corresponding analysis. Which law or which rules apply on which level? And of course, rules, they are only a means to an end. So actually, the wiki owner must first decide what he wants with the wiki, and then he adapts the rules. And uh, yes, maybe this is, is a side thing, but this is a very important thing I like to mention at this, at this place. There are people who say things like this to me. An encyclopedia just for children? That's a waste of resources. It is much better to create a simple encyclopedia that is there for three target groups. Children, the mentally impaired or challenged, and people who have a foreign mother tongue. That is scalability, then the investment is really worthwhile. And allow me to take a different view. I have spoken to people who actually work with children, the mentally impaired and foreigners. I have also been involved in wikis for these target groups. My experience is that the three target groups have very different needs. For example, children want to know where the little babies come from, but they are not necessarily interested in every detail. When I write for ad adults, on the other hand, I have to take them serious as adults, and uh, I have to think and write very differently. And yes, to be absolutely honest, um, I have a certain suspicion. Maybe, maybe some people think we already have our flagship Wikipedia in English. It is for normal people, able grown-ups who speak the language, uh, the language. And then, on, unfortunately, we still have to look after the rest of humanity. Well, we do with, with a simple English Wikipedia and everyone is taken care of. And as I said, this is not the way I think about it. I believe that the website works best when it is designed for a specific target, for a specific target group that you take seriously. And the conclusion. The foundation should analyze the current situation and make a decision. And I have five options here. Option one, Wikipedia remains exactly as it is and the foundation remains silent about the suitability for children. Wikipedia remains as it is, number two, and the foundation explicitly states that it is not suitable for children. Three, Wikipedia has to be changed so that it at least is harmless for children. Maybe not interesting, but harmless for children. Four, Wikipedia has to be changed so that, is, uh, so that it is explicitly aimed at children. And number five, remain, uh, Wikipedia remains as it is, but we try to ensure that it is at least not blatantly inappropriate for children. And yeah, my personal opinion on this uh, you can already guess this. If you really want to make Wikipedia suitable for children, uh, then that would have serious consequences. And I believe that most Wikipedians and readers would not want that. And neither does the foundation think it is true. But think of option five. It would be really useful to talk about how to make Wikipedia more pleasant for all readers. So this is actually already the next slide, but let it be like this. Namely, uh, we should recognize that different readers have different needs. For example, in some Wikipedia language versions, there's the option so of not having certain content displayed immediately. So you can only see that problematic content when you click on a button, as an example. Right, yes, and uh, thanks. This is to summarize my thesis here. First, the Wikimedia Foundation should think more about children as a target group. Second, Wikipedia will never be truly child-friendly but it can and should be improved. Three, children are worth having an encyclopedia designed especially for them. Four, the lexicon, can con the lexicon concept ensures that the wiki is truly suitable for children. There's much more to say about this concept uh, than I have to be able here in short, to, to show in short, and I would like, uh, if you want to take, uh, to have a contact with me to talk about it. And number five, Yes, and Wiki already said it, to discuss children and wikis, the EduWiki user group is the right platform in the global movement. 
O, if not R. Thank you. Thank you, Zico. That, that was really great. I realize we are at time, so I apologize for running a little over here. Um, but uh, Joao had a question in the chat here, and if anyone needs to jump off, they should feel free to. Um, but Zico, do you want to take Joao's question there? Um, so Joao says, Zico, could you please explain why you cover children's faces on pictures coming from commons? Would you still cover them if you had a signed consent from parents to allow the upload to commons, thus reuse and remix? That's a very good question. And, uh, you know, in commons, actually, often we see a little uh, reminder that it depends on the context where you use the image, whether it is appropriate or not. And one funny thing is, you know, if I want to use it, I have to say where I have it from, or at least who made it. And so I blurred the, the face, but you can easily go to comments and watch the faces anyway. So yes, that's uh, a little bit of contradiction. Yes, and uh, covering them, I think it's also kind of showing that we care of that and uh, Seeing the faces often isn't that important to us, but yes, that, that's actually something we can discuss about, yes. Okay, thank you. I hope any, this answers the question. Any other questions or comments for either Zico or Ricky? Feel free to put them in the chat if you would prefer that or um, speak up either way. Jobs, you know, it's really difficult to, to assess all the stuff about uh, wikipedia or wiki movement and children so i appreciate the word and thank you john yes i think this was a very thought-provoking uh presentation so i appreciate um zico and ricky both of you um sharing your perspectives today um, why don't you both drop your contact information in the chat, and if anyone who is attending today wants to follow up with either of our presenters, um, I'm sure they would be happy to discuss this more in depth, um, especially in relation to any of your programs. Um, I'm not sure how many of us run education work um, with people under the age of 18, um, but this is obviously an incredibly important topic of conversation that we should and continue engaging with, especially if you are working with children. So, All right, well, with that, I will wrap up. Oh, Bukola wants to re-emphasize the point made by Zico concerning making it more accessible to children and pupils in secondary school, especially when you are taking them on how to use the citations, which most oftentimes leads to advanced research or online news media. Yes, and yes. Ruby says I, she, I, oh, Zico, go ahead. No, please, please. I, Z, Ruby says, very insightful. I did a Wikipedia training for some kids with their parents attending. At the time, I didn't know about the Wikipedia for kids. Very important topic to drive social change in Africa. Absolutely, Ruby. All right. Well, I, oh, go I ahead, Zico. I would Zico. like to add, there's more to the lexicon concept. And I think it is suitable, especially for small wiki communities, because uh, we not allow anyone create any article, but we want articles that are relevant. And this way we can cover everything or nearly everything uh, children want to know with just 3,400 articles. You know, the search function, we always see what they are searching for and nearly everything we already have an article about. So it is doable to create a children's encyclopedia in your language. It's a lot of work, but I think it's doable and it's it's a more precise and concise goal than recreating English Wikipedia. Yeah, we have a question of if there's a link to the lexicon in English. On MetaWiki, there is a page about, just with the name lexicon, and you should find the information 
uh, that is uh, about the lexicon available in English there. Or you send me a mail and I like to give you some extra documents that are not published yet. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you both so much. I appreciate um, your time, Zico and, and Ricky, and the great presentations that you both did. They were both thought-provoking and interesting. And I know um, many of us in the education community will continue having these discussions into the future. Um, and Ricky, it sounds like you are going to Wikimania. Is that what you said in your slide? So you're welcome to anyone who is fortunate enough to be headed to Poland next month. Um, should feel free to uh, to reach out and continue the discussion there. Oh, you'll be there in spirit, okay. <laughs> uh, in spirit, not in person, but um, I'm still um, hosting a session on, on kind of um, developing plans of action to, to keep children safe on Wikipedia based on the child rights impact assessment. It will be a hybrid session. So even if you are not there like me, um, we can still collaborate on this together. Great. Yes. And Clara, our friend from Poland here is encouraging everyone to, to show up. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it was lovely to see. Thank you for those of you who were able to join us today. And for those of you who are watching the recording later, who were not able to join us in person. So with that, I will wrap it up. Um, and we appreciate all of the great questions and comments. Thank you all.